Hello, in this video I want to do something a little bit different. I want to do a larger example where I'm tying together several ideas we've been learning in this section of the course. And um, so the example is that I want to look at all of these incidents that the City of Madison Fire Department has to deal with, and I want to be able to see it on an animated map. And um, so there's going to be a few pieces involved in that. First, um, this is not in some nice tidy format that I can download. So I'm going to have to do some web scraping on the Daily Fire, Fire Reports website. Um, second, uh, before I can put this on a GeoPandas map, I'm going to have to get latitude and longitude. And guess what? It doesn't give me that. It's just giving me these addresses. So I'm going to be talking about how we can convert addresses into latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, third, once we have that, we're actually going to be creating a GeoPandas map, um, really kind of showing the instance at any given point in time. And then finally, I'm going to combine GeoPandas with um, Matplotlib function animation so I can actually see uh, these events cropping up over time. And, uh, and so on this page, uh, I've already looked at it a little bit, so I'm not going to go into all this detail, uh, but there's not really any complicated JavaScript that's a problem. And so even though I've been teaching Selenium, we're just going to use requests, the request module for that, and that's going to be simpler and easier to use. Now, although JavaScript isn't going to be a problem, one of the things that we're going to see is if I hit inspect on these, is that uh, if I look carefully down here, there is no um, there is no table tag like we're used to. There are just these um, div tags that are everywhere, and the div tags could be a whole table, um, it could be a, a row, um, and it could even be um, say just a single column uh, within a row. And um, and so what I'm going to have to do to try to figure out what I'm looking at is I'm going to be looking at this class attribute that these div tags have. So it's a very different type of table. And I, I can see, well, I do have some hints, right? Even though um, I'm using these divs for everything, or I guess they are, uh, I can see that this one says pseudo table, and that's going to help me actually pull the data out of here. OK, so I'm going to head over here to my notebook, and I'm going to import the requests module. And, uh, and I want to be able to download that page. So I'm going to say requests.get. And uh, looking back here, maybe I can just grab this URL. I'm going to grab that thing. And I'm going to say r equals that, r dot phrase for status. And, uh, and then finally, I can say r dot text. I can actually see what's on that page. And you can see that's kind of slow to run. And if I run it again, it'll be slow to run again. So one of the first things I want to do um, when I'm doing this kind of project is I want to write some code that's going to save my files um, basically onto my computer. And, uh, and then if I try to grab that file again, it'll use the version I already downloaded. And that's going to both um, make the people running the website happier because I'm not going to be hitting their website as hard. And it'll also make my code um, faster. So let me think a little bit about how I'm going to do this. When I look at this um, site here, I, you can see there's a bunch of pages, right? I can go to the next page, and, uh, and you can see that page two actually says page one up here. If I go to page three, it actually says page two up here. And, and, and actually, I'm kind of lucky, even though I don't, uh, it doesn't say page zero on the first one, you know, page one is indexed at zero. And, and so I can grab all these different pages by passing in different numbers here. And, and so what I'd like to do is, I'm going to paste this URL like this. Um, in, in general, when I'm, when I'm uh, trying to grab a page, I am going to make this a format string, and I'm going to pass in some sort of number here. OK? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function that does all of this for me. And maybe I'll call it something like fire HTML. And I'm going to have like a page num here, page number. And uh, maybe I'll make that the page number just like that. And I'm going to have all of this stuff. And then down at the end, I'm actually going to return it. And so let me try calling this thing to make sure I can get different pages. I want to get page zero, for example. And, uh, and that works fine. And, and the reason I put this in a function is that this function can do a little extra work for me. What it will do is it'll save this result to a file, and then uh, it'll check if that file exists in the future. And so I should come up with some sort of file name where I want to save that. And maybe I'll call this something like page, uh, whatever page it is, .html. 
and make that a format string. <coughs> and then all of this stuff here where I'm actually downloading the, the file, um, I'm going to say if not os.path.exists, that file name. Right, so only if I don't already have a file named that am I going to do all of this good stuff. And, um, and now when I do this, right, uh, this file doesn't exist, instead of just returning the thing I downloaded, um, it will be better if I save that to that file that I'm interested in. So I'm going to say with open f name as f, I'm going to say f.write, this little piece of text here. And, um, and I'm going to have to open that up with w to actually make that work. And so if that file doesn't exist, it's going to create it. And, and so maybe I should make a little comment here. I should put this in a, a variable called URL, and I'll actually print it off uh, so I can see what's going on. It looks like I, I can try to tell the way it was tabbing and I forgot an indent there. So if I run this, um, I say OS is not defined on line 3, and that's because I have to import it. Import OS. I run this again. And I can see it downloaded that thing. And if I run it again, well, it's not doing anything that time. It, it's only on that first time. If I download another page, I can see that it's downloading it. Run it again. It's only slow once when it first has to grab it. And, um, and let me see, I have another monitor here. But if I, if I bring this down, you can actually see that I have these multiple pages here. This page 0, page 1, uh, for each time I try to grab a different page. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is I would like to actually return something. That was my original goal. I wanted to feed in a page number and then get all the stuff back from that page. And, um, and so maybe what I'll do down here is at this point, uh, this path ex it definitely exists, right? If it didn't exist before, I've created it here. And, and so now what I can do down here is I can say, I, I know that that file exists and I can open it. Uh, so open F name as F. And then I can just return well, whatever good stuff is inside of that. I do that. And I can get all of that HTML just like so. Right? I can do that. It's fast for any page that I've um, grabbed before. And then if I have a new page, well, it'll be a little bit slower the first time. And I always have it. Right? So this is great. right? I can just kind of um, write my code as if I'm grabbing the fresh stuff every time. Uh, but I'm not going to have any sort of repeated work. Well, that's all fine and well. Um, the next thing I think I want to do is actually try to do the beautiful soup parsing. And so I'm going to say from beautiful soup for import beautiful soup. And uh, maybe the easiest thing to do is instead of kind of dealing with um, HTML directly, I can say, well, I want to get the fire page. And so I'm just going to convert that HTML right there to a page. I run it. And uh, uh, did that change anything? Let me just print off the type of this thing that I'm getting back. Um, that's kind of strange, right? So I think, uh, um, do, you, do you see what, what happened there? If I do a kernel re re restart and run all, you're going to see it. I do a kernel restart run all. And uh, fire HTML is not defined. I renamed this function here. Um, and since I didn't rename it down here, it was just calling the old version, which kind of uh, lingered until I restarted my notebook. So I'm going to do that, and I can grab all these different pages now. Okay, so that's fine. I'm kind of, uh, I have this very efficient function that will get me a beautiful soup page or any of the pages on the actual site. And um, what I would really like to do now is get some, um, uh, some pandas uh, data out of it. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to maybe call this like fire table. And I'm going to pass in the page number just like before. And I'm going to get the page is fire page of um, whatever that number is. And uh, then what we want to do, if I, if I shrink this down and I go back to where I was, let me inspect this. My goal here is I want to go through until I find a div where it says class is pseudo table, right? Because then I know I found the table on the page. And so I should do this. I should say um, page.findAll div. And I can loop over those. So I can say something like for a div in this. Um, I, I can say uh, if 
Oh, well, let me do this. I may print div uh, dot adder. Right, so I can get those attributes for all of the um, all of the pages, which I guess I'm not actually calling my function. Let me change it from fire page to fire table. And I get a bunch of nuns for all of these. Actually, I think it's called adders. My apologies. I run adders and I get all of these things. And uh, what I'm looking for is the pseudo table, right? So I should check if that is inside of the class attribute, right? So, so this whole thing is, um, this whole thing here is adders up above, right? So that's my adders. And uh, so I can say adders bracket class to get to this list. Well, let me just try that. I'm gonna say adders bracket class. And um, it, it's complaining because not all of my divs even have a class. So maybe the better way I could, could do this, I could say get a class. And uh, then it's maybe either none or may have these things. Um, what I'd kind of like to do is have it more uniform. I'd like it to never have um, different types. I'd like it to always be a list. And, and so really what I can do is when I'm looking up something inside of this dictionary, I'm looking up this key, this dictionary, uh, I can pass in a default that I want to get back. So right, right now the default is none. And so if I say this, well, it always gives me a list. These are all the things in the class. And, uh, and I can check then if, uh, you know, pseudo table is in there, right? So um, I, I can say something like if pseudo table is in that thing, well, uh, then I found my table. So I'll say table equals um, this div, and then I'm gonna break. And, uh, and I think the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say up here, table equals none, so that it starts off at something. And, and, and what I'd like to do when I get all done with this loop is I'd like to assert that I actually found something. Um, I didn't kind of go over all the DIVs and never find this pseudo table. So I'll say assert table is not equal to none. And, uh, and maybe then I'll just return this table. That seems like a fine thing to do. Okay, so I, ha I now have this table. And uh, inside of there, I, I can see that there's a header like this. That's fine. And, um, and then I have a bunch of these actual rows, right? So this is like, you know, row hidden XS. I think it's like extra small or something like that. But I can pull out all of these rows and I can actually see in here, there's some of the text, right? That this is describing the incident. I can see that, uh, you know, this was a carbon monoxide emergency. Um, and I can see, well, uh, there was a date associated with it. And so I can try to pull all these things out. So um, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna loop over all the rows inside of that table, right? I found the table, let's loop over all the rows inside of the table. So, so it's actually gonna be very similar to what I had up here, right? Here I was looping over all the divs in the whole page, right? Because this is my whole page. Um, now, now instead of doing it on my whole page, I just wanna do it on this table within the page, right? So I'm gonna do that. So all the, all the divs inside of that. And, uh, and this is gonna be very similar as well. Um, I'm only interested in these ones that say row, exactly. Um, I can see up here, they sometimes have multiple things, but I only want the ones where it's row. So may maybe what I'll do is I'll just print off what I'm, I'm getting so far like I did before, um, just so that we aren't having to do too much um, reasoning in our head, right? So I'm gonna just print that off and I can see that, um, that well, that was like the header before and then uh, these things, these are all columns, which I guess are actually, since a column is inside of a row, these are actually just cells. And, uh, and I can see th these are the ones I really want, right? I have all of these rows. That's what I'm interested in. And, uh, and so what I can do is I can say, well, if this thing, if this here uh, equals this single row like this, well, then I, then I have what I want. So, so then maybe I'm just gonna say, well, that's a row. So I'll say uh, maybe row equals div. Um, it's fine to create more variable names just to make that very clear what's going on. Um, what, once I have one of these rows, it, it, it's kind of funny as I'm looping over it, right? Because uh, these divs were actually contained inside of this one, uh, but it's just looping over them regardless of where they are in the hierarchy. Um, but what I can do is I can print off all of these little ones that are inside of it, right? I can say um, print all. A div, right? And that's gonna give me all the cells. So I'm, so I'm gonna do that. And, and there's a bunch of HTML there and it's kind of complicated. So maybe what would be cleanest is if I looped over uh, these. So I'm gonna say something for something in this. 
right? This is a list comprehension, right? I can build a list from all the stuff I'm getting out of that list. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looping over those. So maybe I can say something like cell, and here I can say something like, um, you know, cell.text. And, and I run that, and now I actually get something that's very close to what I would like, right? I mean, I get this nice little list, and I can see the different pieces there. I can see, like, well, what is the incident type? What was the address? And, and all of that. Uh, maybe what I like to do now is try to put all of these things in a dictionary. I think that'll make it easier to build up um, a, a pandas data frame. Uh, so maybe actually uh, I, I kind of pre prematurely was trying to do this list comprehension and view it all like this. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just loop over each of these things. I pull this uh, list comprehension out like so. I just have a regular loop. And then for each of these cells, I want to split it based on that colon, right? I can split it based on the colon and then look at the two pieces. So um, maybe I'll say, um, you know, my split split index is going to be cell.find, looking for a colon. And, uh, and what I can do is I can print the cell, actually, sorry, let me, be a little careful here, right? What, what type is this cell? That's going to be one of these um, beautiful soup elements. I'm going to actually say cell equals cell.text. And uh, then this will actually work here. And then I can print um, the left of it, right? I can say cell of split uh, index. These are all the kinds of fields I'm trying to pull out. And I can also print off the other side of the colon. What, what, what is after that? Plus one. I want to skip over that colon, which is why I'm adding one there. So when I do that, I get all these pieces, right? I have incident, and then this was the name of the incident, and the date, and there was the date. So, so slowly, right, this is harder than it usually is because everything is in all of these divs, but I'm starting to get to a point where I can pair up um, basically keys and values. And, uh, and if I strip that so there's no white space, that's going to be even, even cleaner, right? So I'm just going to strip all of that, and now I can see it's nicely paired up. So, so maybe what I'll do <coughs> is I will um, try to build all of this up by creating a dictionary. Right for each row, I want to have a dictionary, and uh, this can be my key here, and uh, then this down here can be my value. Okay, right, so I'm gonna have my keys and my values, and I'll just add it to my dictionary. Right, my dictionary of key will equal value, and, and I'm just seeing here that I, I meant to actually have that be a dictionary. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to actually print that thing. And so now I'm getting all of these nice, beautiful dictionaries, uh, which is kind of what I'm interested in, right? This is how I can actually construct my um, data frame. Okay, so we're getting very close. Um, what I can do now is I can uh, um, I, I can put all of these into a list, right? So I'm going to say rows equals list. And then instead of printing it, I'm just going to append it there. So rows.append dictionary. And then when we're all done, what we can do is we can return rows, or better, um, a pandas data frame based on those rows. All right, so that's what I'd like to do. And then up here, of course, I need to import pandas. I'm going to say uh, import pandas as pd. Now let's see, fingers crossed, see if this works. Um, and uh, and it seems to, right? I can get all of this information for the different for the different tables, right? Uh, I, I guess I see that it's a little bit weird, right? That um, sometimes it has the updated column and uh, sometimes does not, right? But otherwise, it, it's pretty consistent across the pages. Um, what I'm going to do is just slice this so I don't have that last column. I just always want the first four columns. So I can say I location, and I want to have all the rows, and then I want everything except that fourth column. So this will give me column zero, one, two, three. So if I do that, right, I have the same um, consistent thing. And, and the reason why I want to do that is that down here, then I can say pd.concat, and, uh, and then I can um, pull together all of my different, all of my different um, data frames, right? I can, I can grab several pages actually quite, quite quickly and quite elegantly, and just have this one huge um, data frame. You, you do see that when I'm, concatenating a bunch of little data frames that has the repeated index here, right? It starts over at zero like that. So I should really say like reset index. <coughs> and um, 
let me let me think i think there's an option i want to keep here uh i think drop is true you can see that when i'm doing that it's shoving this back up here i don't want to do that i want to drop it and now i actually have a nice data frame where it's kind of counted um like it normally would be and, and then i can go from here in the next steps in terms of actually getting these addresses and the latitude and longitude so i'll be doing that in the next video